Hello and welcome. Today's make is a bit of a step back in time. I used to use a handmade crocheted basket that I just threw together once upon a time and that was my sewing basket for many many years but that solution just would not do. I had filmed the process of trading in my sewing basket for a new one lining that new basket and making it ready to use, but I never did anything with the footage. So I thought I would take that footage and show you how I converted a thrifted basket into my sewing basket. It was also a perfect way to use up old scraps of fabric, turning that cabbage or those old scraps into coleslaw or teeny tiny bits of fabric that I could use as a batting substitute. So if you are looking for ways to use up your old scraps or turn an old basket into something new, stay tuned. Okay, welcome to my little crafty corner. This is my current sewing basket. This is not a handle, by the way. This is just how I've been picking up the basket. This basket is one of the first baskets that I crocheted actually. Um, inside I think there's some twine that we had laying around the house and then yarn that was left over from a previous project. And this has served as my sewing basket for a long time. Um, and while she has served me well, I think she needs to go into retirement. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other problem that I'm having with this basket is what you saw just a second ago. It's really hard to pick up one-handed and when I'm picking it up I'm kind of putting strain on the sides there and I'd rather not do that. So I've gone thrifting and I found I think a solution that I'm going to be very happy with. So I I know that I want handles so I can pick up my basket easily. I want something that can move from place to place quickly um, that I can just go and grab and bring with me and follow my three-year-old because I have to go upstairs, downstairs and follow him all about the house with whatever activity we're doing that day. I have found this beautiful basket. That's the back. There she is. What she does have are two beautiful handles. She is hinged and opens like so. So I can also keep my three-year-old out of the pointy things in the basket. This was $2.99 that I got at my local Salvation Army. Um, the only problem with it is that she is currently unlined. She was also well-loved, clearly. Um, She's got some wear and tear, so I think what I would like to do is line it. And I think that will do a couple things for me. It will protect the basket. It will put some padding in there so that all of my pointing bits and pins and materials and stuff that I have in my current sewing basket will not fall through which they are often want to do in this basket because again it's crocheted and it has lots of holes in it so there are times when I pick it up and pins fall out the other side and that's no bueno. In terms of the lining and the padding I think what I'm going to do is rather than go out and buy new materials I'm going to use as much as I can existing materials so some material I have left over from an old project. This lovely cotton material. My lovely bin of cabbage from previous projects. And I've already started trying to break them up a little bit. I still have quite a ways to go. But I think I'm going to use the cabbage and turn it into coleslaw, essentially. And use that as the padding for the inside of my sewing basket. I think I'm going to make the walls of the basket essentially one big long rectangle that I can then wrap around almost like an inner tube and stuff that in the sides and then a much bigger pillow for the bottom layer. That is my plan. We'll see how it goes. 
Wish me luck. I decided I wanted to make a mock-up for the walls of this sewing basket for the rectangle that would be lining the sides essentially. And to do that, I'm just taking some quick measurements here of the length, the width, and the depth, as well as taking measurements for the for the pillow that I'm going to be putting at the very bottom. I keep calling it pillow because I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> it basically is just another rectangle that I am adding on the bottom and keeping those pieces separate. I figured that would be the easiest way to adhere those two separate pieces as the lining. Here I'm transferring those measurements to a mock-up material. This is just some old material from a garment that I had altered and thrifted. Pinning it together. And pretty soon I'm going to take this to my sewing machine where I will promptly discover the horrors that is bird nesting, where your thread gets bunched up underneath the fabric. This is a problem I had not experienced before, but I tell you, it is not fun. <sighs> okay. I had to apparently do some maintenance on my sewing machine, which I had never done before. So it involved a lot of looking at YouTube videos and <laughs> reading through all 82 pages of my sewing machine manual. So we're back to it. <laughs> While testing to make sure that my sewing machine was not going to freak out on me, I went ahead and made a sort of a mock-up cushion. This is kind of what I'm looking for for the bottom of the sewing basket. Um, so I think I'm ready to move on to cutting out the pieces. Although for this one cushion, it took nearly my entire bin of coleslaw, so <sighs> my poor thumb is in for a lot more cutting of fabric, so. <laughs> uh, but that's okay, because I'm hoping that that will use up all of the spare scraps that I have left, um, which I guess just means that I have to do more sewing projects so that I have more scraps so that I can do something else with coleslaw, right? That's how that logic works, I'm pretty sure. Next up will be cutting out the actual pieces for the sewing basket lining, then 5,000 years of cutting coleslaw, and hopefully we'll be able to fill this thing pretty soon and have a working sewing basket. So here I'm just transferring those initial measurements to the final material, cotton material, that I'm going to use for the side and the bottom pieces. There weren't really any changes I needed to make to that initial mock-up or those measurements apart from add a tad more seam allowance. I know that everyone has their preferred seam allowance. I tend to go for half an inch. For this one, I went to 5 eighths of an inch, not that that matters, but. I am double checking my measurements for the absolutely enormous inner tube of a rectangle that I'm about to make here. Check twice, cut once, I think is the Adam Savage motto. Before I finally cut and pin my pieces together and take them to my newly oiled and cleaned out sewing machine. Welcome back. It has been 10,000 years since I saw you last, hence the change of clothes, hence the I don't care hair. <sighs> but the cabbage has been turned into coleslaw. Next step is to take this cabbage, which is now coleslaw, fill the pillows, and hopefully put them into the sewing basket, and we will call that project complete. All right, time to fill these rectangles and get them ready to adhere to the side of that sewing basket. <laughs> Don't forget to massage your sewing basket liners, folks. Absolutely necessary. <laughs> At this point, I am just shaking up my spray adhesive 
I am using a fabric spray adhesive to attach this liner to the sides and leaving it to set overnight so that that can fully adhere in place. Okay, it is a new day. She has been sitting overnight and the adhesive should be dry. Came just to close this this morning to see if I had indeed wiped off all the adhesive from the top so the top would not be sticking close. And she looks so pretty. I'm very happy with the result. Here she is. I really like how the coleslaw worked out as a solution for the batting. I'm also very pleased with how crisp these sides turned out and adhered with that fabric adhesive. I didn't know how that would go over, but I thought it went quite well. And I think we are ready to move over. I'm very pleased. So she is done. I'm very happy. So thank you for joining me on this baking journey and um, yeah, for coming along on this ride that is figuring out filming. And hopefully I will see you next time. Bye.